Sometimes what we are going through can be looked at through a different perspective. Here's some food for thought. Maybe your hardship isn't a hardship after all. Maybe it's the greatest learning opportunity that you'll ever have. Maybe it's the very thing you've been praying for. Flip the script on perspective and look at it a different way. Hey guys, Juan here. Thanks for taking a moment to watch this short little video message. Hopefully it was an encouragement to you. Uh, if you like this video, maybe subscribe to my channel. I'd love to have you back on the next one. And then also let me invite you to stick around and watch some older encouraging words. God bless. Webster's defines faith as complete trust or confidence in someone or something. I like that. Complete trust. Because faith also tells me that no matter what lies ahead of me, God is already there. Hey guys, here is an encouraging word for you. In your joy, God is good. In your pain, God is good. In your trials, God is good. Matter of fact, God is good all the time. Hey guys, I wanted to make a quick little video here to tell you that no matter what you've got going on through the ups and through the downs, that God is with you through it all. And sometimes things happen that may not necessarily make any sense, but this is a perfect time to trust God even through all the craziness. Well, hey guys, Juan here, and we all could use a little encouragement to start our week. So here is an intriguing thought for you. If God can use Paul, and if God can use David, if God can use Moses, if God can use Mary, if God can use Peter, and if God can use me, then God can use you too. At Redwoods of San Francisco's Mere Woods started as tiny seeds. New York's Empire State Building began as an invisible thought. And the gospel message, which has gone into practically every inch of the planet, originated in a pocket-sized nation of Israel. So what's the common denominator among all these examples? Small beginnings. See, everything in life starts small. People, trees, houses, relationships, and even faith. But when something, even a microscopic something, is loved, nurtured, cultivated, that small beginning begins to grow exponentially. A garden is planted one inch of dirt at a time, a book is written one word at a time, a marathon is run one step at a time, and a relationship with God is deepened one day, one hour, and one moment at a time. We are carriers of the kingdom of seeds, so we can't be afraid to start small. We don't always see the potential in our small beginnings, but God does. Authenticity speaks louder than the facade of perfection ever could. So don't be fake. Jesus isn't looking for perfect Christians. He's looking for humble ones. Our world is broken, hurting, and outrageously divided. So what is it that we need? Well, here's a few things that we need. We need hope. We need grace, we need peace, we need unity, we need humility. To put it simply, we need Jesus. You know, we live in a world where it's all about I or me concept, but what if we tried to change this by doing all the good that's possible? Here's a quote by John Wesley. He said, do all the good you can, by all the means you can, in all the ways you can, in all the places you can, at all the times you can, to all the people you can, as long as you ever can.
Some of the heroes of our faith and well-known individuals of the Bible had issues of their own. See, Job dealt with depression. Martha dealt with anxiety. Jonah dealt with fear. Moses dealt with insecurity. And David dealt with pride. Everybody's human. And everybody needs Jesus. Hey guys, so check this out. If sin can destroy Samson, who was the strongest, Solomon, who was the wisest, Judas, who was a disciple, David, a man after God's own heart, then it will try to outsmart, outpower, and overcome you as well. So keep your guard up and fix your eyes on Jesus. The word no, N-O, it can be hard to hear sometimes. And many of us can feel a sting that comes with it whenever we do hear it. But sometimes God tells us no because he has something better for us. Sometimes God tells us no because we're not ready. But there's comfort in having faith in God and knowing that we can trust in his timing. William Shakespeare once asked the question, what's in a name? Well, here's some food for thought. Love has a name. Grace has a name. Strength has a name. Comfort has a name. Forgiveness has a name. Power has a name. Wisdom has a name. Patience has a name. Peace has a name. And hope has a name. Hey guys, I wanted to give you a quick little encouraging word. The forecast is calling for a little rain, which I'm not a fan of. I don't like to get wet. Uh, but there are some people that enjoy the rain. They enjoy the clouds. They enjoy the thunder. But in all actuality, it is necessary for the rain so that the soil can be enriched, so that the flowers can bloom, and so that roots can grow deeper. Now, the same is true for our spiritual walks. See, storms in life, they will come. Uh, the tidal waves will come. Uh, the rain will come. But the reality is that these things will help you grow stronger. They will help your roots grow deeper and wider. So even in the tough times in life, remember that these things happen for a reason. See, God will take a broken time or maybe even a really rough time and make you stronger than the day you were before.